Hello, and welcome to an overview of the 2019 Community Commitment Awards. My name is Joan Devine, and I am the Director of Education for Pioneer Network. Joining me is... I'm Matthew Lissobay, and I'm with Rockport Healthcare Services. We would like to share with you a little bit about what this award is and how you can apply to uh, receive this award for your community. So what is this award? It recognizes members of the long-term care community for their volunteer service to help and enhance their communities. What are we looking for? We're looking for three teams of up to four people per team. They'll be selected through a competitive process co-led by Pioneer Network and Rockport Healthcare Services. And we're very proud to be partnering again with this wonderful organization. Each team has to include at least one resident and one staff member. It has to be a volunteer project that's at least six months old. It has to be established, it has to benefit the community at large, your city, your town, your neighborhood, uh, that's a part of that long-term care community. So something that provides meaning and purpose to the residents or elders in your community, but make a difference beyond that, that help the community at large understand and see the value that elders bring to their general, to, to the overall society that just because you live in a nursing home or you're older does not mean that you don't still provide meaning and purpose to others. But what do you get if you are a recipient of the Community Commitment Award? Well, we think it's pretty exciting what you can get. Up to three teams will each receive a cash award, that plus registration, travel, and lodging for the 2019 Pioneer Network Conference, which is being held April 4th through 7th in Louisville, Kentucky this year. These teams need to include at least one resident, and that resident has to be somebody who has been highly involved and engaged in the program that you have applied for this award. The presentation of the awards is, as I said, going to be at the Pioneer Network, Pioneering a New Culture of Aging Conference in Louisville this year. It will happen at the general session on Monday, August 5th. Uh, we'll highlight the award-winning programs, and then there will be a presentation to those recipients. Again, going back to the criteria, at least one resident or elder, and they must be actively involved in the project. So it can't be a project that you just came up with as an organization and told your residents, let's do this. It has to be something that your residents were truly a part of the drive behind this program being created. So in other words, we want to be sure that we are demonstrating, that your programs are demonstrating that our residents give as well as receive. The program can take place in any level of care community. The program must in some way, again, serve that greater community, your town, your city, your state, or your nation. The program has to be fully operational, uh, so established, and it must include active participation, again, as much as possible uh, it, of, your, of your residents, including a, being a part of the leadership. And I know we said that a couple times, but that's such a very important part of this, because this really is about residents, about the elders. Again, where do you find information uh, for this program? Well, you can go to the Pioneer Network website and you can see there's a link right there on the page. Oops, there's a link right here that shows you where the uh, Pioneer Network website is right there. You click on it. Uh, and you can also go to over here, the Community Commitment Awards. And if you click on that, you're going to get some information about last year's recipients. So you can take a look at that. Um, you can also get more information about this session itself. But here's where you're actually going to click to apply for the award. So it's a kind of an easy process. And so now I'd like to turn it over. And Matthew is going to share just a little bit more with you. Yeah, thanks, Joan. Uh, and we, we are really excited about the opportunity to uh, share the amazing stories. And I think the basic concept is that people still need to be needed, have an innate desire to serve, to help their fellow man, uh, regardless of having cognitive and physical challenges. And so what this is about, and as you can see in this photo, uh, there's people here with dementia, people here with strokes, people here with vision impairment, and they're all working. And I want you guys to notice that there, you don't see any staff members present because this is not a spectator award. This is about 
the residents themselves doing the work. If you want to find out a little bit more about some of the stories of people being of service, you can go to www.aheart2serve.org and there are many short two to three minute documentaries um, in the residents' own words uh, about these service projects. But let's go ahead and go through the application. I'll be one of the judges so I can tell you some of the things we'll be looking for. Uh, obviously, the the basic information, name, how to contact you guide. Uh, this is important. We want to know who the community partner is. So are you working with a homeless shelter? Are you working with uh, animal rescue? Are you working uh, with someone uh, affiliated with at-risk kids? So we want to know, know the name of who the residents are serving and helping and contact information for them and then the level of living. All right, and on the next uh, is basically the summary, name of the program, overview of the program. So we want to understand what the residents are doing, how uh, they're helping. Uh, for example, you'll see at a heart to serve org, you'll see a program where we have over 70 nursing homes that are partnering with homeless shelters across the state, and they are feeding 150, 200 people where they're actually preparing the meal. They're actually going out to the homeless shelter and actually scooping the food onto the plates. Uh, program development, the development process, so we want to understand how this all came to be. So you can describe describe the early formation of these ideas. And on the next slide, uh, who are the residents that are involved? Uh, so we want specifics about who's involved in the program. How are the residents involved? Uh, like Joan and I have mentioned many times, this sometimes we have residents watching things happen and feeling like they're involved because they're enjoying viewing the process. This, this is not that. This is residents actually doing the work. So we want to know how they're specifically, are they cutting up tomatoes? Are they walking a dog? Are they teaching a child, helping teach a child to read? How is this program benefiting the residents? We just want to know what changes are you seeing in the people that are participating in this program? Is it having an impact on apathy, depression, engagement in your community. Challenges that you've had to overcome. You know, if someone, we, we assume with physical and cognitive challenges that people can't participate, but we're set up in many of our long-term care communities with therapists, occupational therapists that can help us find ways for everyone who wishes to serve to serve. And that's what we're very interested in is someone who no longer believes they're capable physically or cognitively of serving, finding ways for those people to uh, serve with adaptive equipment and different innovations. So that is a key, key component I know that I'll be looking for. How has this project changed the way the families and others perceive the value and ability? So we want to look at how is this impacting people's view because the people if they're serving truly serving are not no longer just in the role of care receiver patient resident they're contribute now a contributing member of the community and of society and how does that change the way they interact name of the greater community partners how is this program benefiting the community at large? And it's critical that this is not pretend. There are real needs out there in every single community. And we have people in our long-term care communities that are very excited about uh, helping fulfill those needs. So we want to look at uh, exactly what's happening. For instance, uh, at Rockport, we have about 4,000 uh, meals per month that the residents are serving across the state. So that's 
actually what's happening. All right. And this is a really critical part, and we'd like to see more videos, pictures, and the videos and pictures. And the reason we included the picture uh, earlier, it was it shows people, the residents, actually doing the work. And that's what we're interested in here is seeing people. There's definitely a joy to service, but there's also the hard work of service. So don't be afraid to show people putting in some hard work to continue to serve their communities. We'd love to see some videos, a minute, 60 seconds, to really see the residents in action. And, and we really, really do encourage you to consider whether or not you have something in your community that meets the criteria of this award. We know things are happening across the country. Wonderful things are happening across the country. It does not have to be to the extent of this incredible program that, that has come from Rockport Healthcare Services. It may not be that mature in its life as a, as a program for you. They've taken lots of years to get to where they are, and yet I think they inspire us. And if you look at last year's award recipients, I think you will see uh, that many different types of communities are doing things. We had last year a large CCRC. We had a community in Canada with a younger population. Uh, and then we had a very small community, 110 residents in rural Louisiana. So this can work for any of us, any of our communities have the opportunity to build and grow this type of program. So if you have that kind of program and, are, and, and feel that it is worthy of putting your hat in the ring for the award this year, we encourage you to do that. Our deadline for application is April 19th, 2019. The winners will be announced on May 24th. Well, they won't, I have to, that's probably a little deceiving. The winners will be notified on May 24th. We're not going to announce until the actual conference. So it'll be a surprise on the day of the conference on August 5th when the awards are actually presented to our recipients. So please consider whether or not you have a program. If you do, again, please apply. If you don't, we hope you're inspired maybe to think about putting something together and maybe being ready for the 2020 uh, Community Commitment Awards. Matthew, any other thoughts? Uh, I just uh, encourage people to reach out to uh, Joan or myself if, you, if there are any questions, we're, we're happy to be there and we're excited to see all the amazing things that are happening across the country and across the world. Very exciting. And good luck, everybody. <laughs>